Hey, welcome back everybody. Today we're going to be installing a Masonite barn door. They sell this at Home Depot for uh, $1.99. Lowe's has products like this. Very similar. Uh, I'm not sure about the quality. I never installed one or anything like that. But they are $400. They are actually $3.99. Um, so after we went to Lowe's and saw that they were $3.99, we uh, turned around and found a Home Depot. So that's what we're going to be doing today. You're going to be setting up a Home Depot barn door kit. What we're going to do is we're going to polyurethane this and uh, we'll do three coats. And I'm not going to bore you with doing that. And then uh, we're going to sand in between each coat. And then we'll install this door. All right, now that we got our uh, door all polyurethaned, we're ready to start installing the brackets and the handle and get this thing on the wall. Comes with this hardware kit here. Kind of looks overwhelming. But it's honestly not that bad. They give you different hardware for different applications. Drywall, cement, stuff like that. We're gonna need these and these brackets here. Get these mounted on the door. Now there is instructions that come with this. It's pretty straightforward if you follow the steps. All right, when you're hanging these brackets, you gotta make sure you have your door positioned the right way. This door, that's gonna be the top. Obviously there's already holes pre-drilled in it. So you know that's the top, but depending on where you wanna put your handle, um, we're putting ours right in this location here. I have to double check, I think it's 36 inches from the bottom they want you to put it. Um, but make sure you pay attention to that. If you want to put your hand over here, I think that's the way most people want to do it. That's the way the pictures show. Uh, it just looks better. Right, we got a bracket set up here. Holes are a little tight, so I had to use the drill there. And these nuts and these bolts are, uh, it looks like they're metric, uh, 16 millimeter. You can get away with a 5 8 uh, wrench or socket also. And I like to double check it by hand. We're going to install our anti-jump blocks here. They're offset, off-centered. See the screw hole there? It's offset. You don't put it in the center of the door. This is so your door doesn't jump off these wheels and end up on the ground. Pretty sure they want them just on the edge there. And then you rotate it so it doesn't jump off. We'll see what happens when we install a door. I had to remove mine and reinstall them. When I did the other door in the bathroom, nothing fancy, try to keep it consistent. Now you're supposed to have tapered screws with these. This was an open box. I'm going to use these screws here. It uh, looks like they uh, lost them. Not the best working space here, but basically you just center it the best you can, no big deal. Uh, my 36 is in the middle, that's how I did my other door, so that's how I'm doing this one. All right, we got a handle installed. Our brackets here for the rollers. Now we gotta get this track mounted. This board comes with the kit. You don't have to buy it separately. They want you to do is center this uh, piece of steel here, this rail, with your board. And then mark the hole locations so you can drill them. Because we're going to be putting lags through here. Pencil in your holes real quick. And then we got to pre drill those. So my setup's going to be a little bit different from yours. I have this light switch here and I'm trying to make it so the door slides past the light switch so you can toggle the switch 
and then slide the door shut. So the door is actually going to be set, the rail is going to be set further to the outside wall than yours will be. Because you don't, typically you won't need to go past that switch. It'll be somewhere around here, your door's going to stop. So, um, in my case, I'm moving everything over a little bit so I can access this uh, light switch. Now we're going to be using these uh, two and a half inch Phillips head screws. Uh, I'm just going to pre-drill my first location here so I can get it installed on the wall. Use an eighth inch drill bit. Or at least something close to an eighth inch drill bit, no big deal. We don't want to split the wood, obviously. Yeah, this would be a lot better with two people. We got our board up. Double check, make sure you're nice and level before you stop putting all these holes in your walls. And uh, we're gonna fasten it with more of these screws. We're gonna pre-drill each one. Make sure it's nice and uh, strong. Try to find the studs. Um, I can see my studs because I use the uh, finish nails on these pine boards. And if I get the right angle, I can see where the finish nail was. So that's easy on my part. But uh, you might have a difficult situation. Uh, stud finder, something like that to help you out. Where we previously marked our holes on that metal rail, we're gonna drill those out with a quarter inch. With a quarter inch bit. Put the wide shoulder towards the board so it doesn't dig into it. We'll do the same to the other ones. Alright, we're gonna grab the door and see how we made out. Hopefully we're uh in the ballpark of where we want to be and not too close to that floor or too far away. See, it should work out nice. Remember, you don't have your stops on yet. The door will fall right off. Yep, so that'll be fine. That there is what I was looking for. Like I said, my situation is a little different than yours. Some people might not have light switches. It might be in, in the interior of the uh, room. But in this one here, so now you can toggle the light and then, you know, shut the door. Keep in mind that this door here, there's no handle on the interior and there's also no lock mechanism. That's something you're probably going to have to figure out if that's what you want. Also come with these guides. That's what you're going to use on the bottom to hold the door from flopping in and out. Uh, we're not going to be installing those today. We don't have our trim boards installed yet. Once our trim boards are installed, then you can install these. Uh, just to help guide your door so it's not moving back and forth. Uh, here's the stops. They come with two uh, set screws and an Allen wrench. I'm going to be installing so that the set screws are up. You don't want to be looking at set screws. Yep, see, that'll work great. Yep, there we go. This is our stop. We can still get to our light switch. So that's what we needed. Somewhere around there for now. And don't forget, remember we took these anti-jump blocks off. You want to make sure these go back on. You don't want that door falling off. So I got the natural finish. I had the polyurethane this or stain it. I had the opportunity to do whatever I wanted with it. Um, you can pick different colors, different stains. They have them all pre-stained uh, pre and pre-painted. We went with the natural finish so we could do what we wanted with it. And we're just going to leave it with that pine look. So there you have it. Pretty simple to install these. Just take your time. Make sure you drill your holes properly. Your measurements are good. And uh, you get yourself a barn door. Well, there you go. Now you guys are... Uh, Bond door installation experts. Uh, pretty basic. Follow the directions, do it right, and you get yourself a bond door for $199. Can't beat it. Hopefully, you learned something from this video. Remember, share, like, and subscribe, and uh, we'll see you soon. Take care.